Star Girl, ladies and gentlemen, episode nine, The Monsters. I feel like this should have happened for Halloween. So, <laughs> but it's your boy Icon with a little DC TV, and then that we turn into a monster. So the question is, who are the monsters? Like, who are the monsters under the table? Who are the monsters under the bed? But the episode starts where Pat and Courtney return from the Helix Institution because they've been riding the bus and Barbara's there to greet them. And then she's just like, oh, Courtney, where have you been? Because obviously they were talking on the phone. And then she's just like, oh, where's Yolanda? And she's like, she's been sleeping in your bed for a week. And then Courtney goes and runs upstairs. And then when Courtney runs upstairs, she sees Yolanda looking homeless. And then Yolanda's just like, I'm sorry, Courtney. And Courtney's like, I'm sorry. And they hug. And I'm looking at Yolanda like, yeah, you you sorry now because your ass ain't got no place to live and then they embrace Courtney talks to her they have their little girl time and then she tells them that she needs her help with something because she has something that she wants to do but she needs to get the approval of the group before she does it Barbara have a conversation Barbara basically asked him she was like you know I know you were in the Shadowlands and she's like you know tell me what happened you know what went on in the Shadowlands and then we get Pat's backstory so apparently Pat did not actually marry Mike's mother he was just a woman that he met. Apparently the two of them had a one night stand or they basically dated for a little bit. He knocked her up. She never told him that she was pregnant. And then she gave birth to Mike or whatever. And then, you know, Pat found her. They had, they had shared custody. And then one day, the I guess the police that like, they found Mike at, a, you know, like at an orphanage or like at a shelter and the mom was gone because they said that she had OD'd or they said that she was using or something. Basically the, girl, the woman was on drugs. And she basically ditched Mike and left him at um at a shelter. They found Pat. Pat took Mike in, and then he kept Pat away from you know away from his mom. Mike would always ask like, "Hey, Pat, you know." See, and that explains why Mike keeps calling him Pat because Mike was with his mother for a while before Pat even knew about him. So that so it's not like he grew up with Pat. So you know he calls him Pat and not Dad. But then you know like but Mike would always ask like, "Hey, what's up with mom? What's up with mom?" And you know Pat never really answered that question, and he just ignored him and hoped that it would go away. And then eventually Mike. Mike just stopped asking, but internally he always thought about it, misses his mom. So, you know, Barbara was just like, well, you have to have, you have to let Mike, you know, talk to his mother. And then he's just like, that's not a good idea, but it's the right thing to do. Pat starts researching, looking for the wife or the mom. And, you know, the sports master ends up helping him out with that. So now they're on a search, try to find Mike's mom, which will be a very awkward conversation. And then surprisingly, like Pat was gone for the rest of the episode. But <laughs> then, so then regarding the youth, uh, they end up having a conversation where everybody apologized to everybody at the dinner table. And then that's when Courtney told them that she wanted to tell Cameron the truth. And then Rick was immediately like hells to the no. But then she was just like, oh, we can't we can't hide the truth from him. And then Rick was like, look, you can do what you want, but I still got your back no matter what happens. You know, if he flips out, I got your back. You're my family. I'm with you guys. But he was like, once this shit blows up in your face, just be ready for that. I told you so because this is a bad idea. Everybody else agrees. And then Courtney goes down to Cameron's house to tell him the whole thing about his dad, the JSA, and everything in between. Prior to that, we get, a, we get a scene where Cameron's art teacher showed up at the grandparents' house because he wanted to talk to Cameron because he said that Cameron had quit art class. The whole time he's talking to them about like, oh, it's his passion, it's something that he loves, I'm not gonna let, I'm not gonna let him quit being an artist. And then the grandmother's like, I can't take no more of this shit. And she froze him and she killed the art teacher and put him in the dumpster. That was wrong. So then Courtney shows up, she's having a conversation with Cameron and she's like, oh, I wanna tell you about your dad and what really happened. She was just like, listen, your dad's not the person you thought he was. And as soon as she said those words, the grandma busted through the room. And then she was like, you'll die, bitch. And then she went to attack Courtney and everything because she was just like, she's not gonna let you besmirch the name of her child. So now Beth, Rick, and Yolanda, the three of them are talking. Rick is basically still having the anger issues with the hourglass. Beth knows about it and she, she kind of called him out on it, but not really. And, but then she said that she was doing a search throughout the city where she was trying to locate all the different, you know, like the signals from where the cameras were coming from. And she said that they did track a signal to Cameron's household. So Rick immediately got upset because he was just like, oh, they're all in on it. He put the costume on, he goes to Cameron's house, kicks in the door, waves in the 4-4, and then he attacks Cameron. Cameron starts fighting him with the ice power. Courtney ended up telling Cameron that that was Rick in the costume. Cameron didn't seem like surprised by that. And then the two of them just continued to fight. Yolanda shows up in costume. She ends up fighting the grandmother. Kudos to the stunt double actress who plays the grandma. And then Beth, when Beth came in the house, she was confronted with the grandfather. Now here's the thing about Beth. There was a moment where when she saw the grandfather and the grandfather tried to use his cold power to attack Beth. Right before they went into the house, 
Yolanda told Beth, she was like, hey, listen, stay behind and don't come inside. And then, you know, Beth was just like, but Yolanda. And then Yolanda was like, look, Beth, like fighting's not your thing. So it's best that you stay out of harm's way. And Yolanda's correct. You know, like she should stay out of harm's way because she can't fight. And then conveniently, when she gets confronted by the grandfather, her dad ends up calling her goggles from a from a, um, an unlisted number from a burner phone. And then he's like, oh, your mother and I, we were talking to Dr. McKnighter. And now because the conversation of you not being able to fight conveniently came up in this moment, we've now conveniently come up with some things that your suit can do that you weren't aware of that'll help you out in this specific jam that we haven't talked about at all for the past three seasons. And I was just like, really? It would have been different because even then, when Beth's parents confront, well, when Beth confronted her parents about not wanting her parents involved because her parents could get hurt, that was the perfect moment for her parents to then counter and say, oh, honey, but you can't fight. You know, like you're not a protector, like you're not an aggressive person. What if you get hurt? Like if there was a storyline that built, if her parents would have said that, if her parents would have countered and said that to her, it would have then made more sense why her parents would then talk to Dr. McKnighter to find out if there's something they can do to protect their child from getting hurt, which is what made him bring up the fact that the goggles and the suit has a combat mode. You drop the ball on that by not having best parents have that conversation. So now it just looks like the whole thing about the suit just having magical combat powers just comes out of nowhere just based on like character convenience for the moment. And like I said, like that, that was a failed opportunity there. But anyway, but now, now all of a sudden the horrible and, but see, but hopefully the only way they're going to salvage this is if now that, now that Beth's parents knows everything about the goggles and about the costume, if they build her a new suit that has all the same gadgets and technology, I'll let it slide. But it was just dumb that her parents never brought this up before. Nobody ever brought up Beth fighting. And then the moment it actually gets brought up, now all of a sudden her suit got a combat mode. And it was actually pretty dope because the suit, and it, and it also makes sense because since Dr. McKnighter is blind, the suit was designed to let him know what's gonna happen before it happens. Right before the grandfather fired, he was like headshot, duck. He was like, oh, he's about to kick you, sweep. You know, at this moment, throw a left hook. And that makes perfect sense because Dr. McKnighter is blind, so you would need somebody to lead you in that situation. So the whole thing makes sense. It just I just wish we would have brought up Beth not, not being able to fight like six episodes ago. So anyway, so now Beth is Beth now all of a sudden she's combat ready. She's fighting the old guy. Um, Yolanda's fighting the grandmother. And then Artemis busted in the house because I don't even know how Artemis found out they was even in the house. Artemis busts in the house. You know, she helps out Beth. And now like there's this whole big JSA fight with everything and the grandparent. Rick and Cameron get into it. They have a very physical battle. Towards the end, because Cameron's anger got the best of him and he ended up using his ice powers to basically keep Rick at bay and Cameron kind of whooped his ass like I'm, I'm not going for it like <laughs> Cameron beat his ass and Cameron was and then even like Courtney tried to intervene and then Rick had knocked like Courtney off like, up against the wall whatever and then the grandmother came out of nowhere because she had defeated Yolanda the grandmother came out of nowhere and then she was like oh Cameron these are the people that killed your father and then he was about to kill Rick and then that's when the grandfather came in and he was like Cameron no he was like don't feed into the darkness like your father did and then he keeled over because he was having a heart attack and then Beth showed, and then that's when Beth came in the room and then she was like oh he's having a heart attack now she called her mama she was like mom save the day and then her mom was just like oh honey your suit is also a defibrillator so you can use it to pray I'm just like why did we not bring this up y'all could have cued this up before but anyway so now they're giving him like you know clear doing the whole clear thing they save the grandfather they bring the grandfather back to life everybody calms down now rick rick after getting his ass beat he's like i'm sorry courtney cameron looking pissed off everybody pissed off and then we don't know what happens after that because we didn't get to see that conversation so then that's how that whole thing ended there was a cool scene where barbara and Tigress, like Tigress was trying to teach Barbara how to fight and Barbara gave it a try, but she was just like, violence isn't her thing. And I feel like Tigress needs to push, first of all, I love the two of them together having their scenes, but Tigress needs to push that a little bit more. Cause first of all, Barbara made that girl bake a pie. So, and that wasn't her thing. So if she was able to do stuff that Barbara likes, the least Barbara could do is throw a punch at a punching bag. And what, and what Tigress said is true. We're being hunted, people are looking at us, there are cameras everywhere. You need to know how to protect yourself in case something happens. So I feel like Barbara gave up, the whole thing about Barbara learning how to fight, that, they gave up on that way too quickly. We need to revisit that. And Barbara, something needs to happen to make Barbara go to Tigris and say, hey, listen, I want you to train me now because you were right. And then finally, Mike and Jakeem, they're looking for Cindy because, and what Jakeem said was true, because he was just like, listen, Cindy was going through stuff. She was supposed to be a member of the team. 
and everybody basically just bailed on her and she needs help. Like we need to actually like find out what's going on with her so we can help her. So now they're looking for Cindy. When they find, well, they tracked Cindy's information because Cindy had a list of all the different types of labs that her father used to have and she was going through each lab one by one by one. They find one lab that she had circled and they go down to that lab. When they got to that lab, there was a person who was dead on the floor. I didn't get to see who the person was. When they go into the barn, um, a creature who looked like the ultra humanite. And if that is the ultra humanite, like that's actually pretty dope, <laughs> you know, but he busted in. It was basically a gorilla. It was a talking gorilla basically. And then Jakeem and Mike and everybody, they screamed and then they ran off and we never found out what happened to Cindy. But now there's like a gorilla on the loose. There's a gorilla in the mist. And I don't know if the gorilla, it's like, like, cause in, at the end of the storyline with the ice family and everybody else, Rick was like, oh, they're the ones that have been spying on us. And that doesn't make sense to me because if the grandparents, well, first of all, the grandfather wasn't. If the grandmother was the one spying on them, why would she be covering her face and having on this whole hood and everything to conceal her identity? I'm, I'm more convinced that the gorilla might have been the one who's spying on them because it would make sense why the gorilla would have a, you know, like a hoodie on. But at the same time, the person who's watching them on the cameras isn't that big because the gorilla was like big, as, like big as hell and the person in the, in the hoodie was a little slim. So we still don't know who the person is in the sewer. That's still a thing. And that still needs to be discovered. But now we got, gorilla, we got gorillas in the mist, <laughs> you know, like coming up and we still need to have a conversation with Cameron because Courtney still needs to tell him because I saw in the coming attractions, Cameron wants to know how his daddy died. So that's an awkward conversation for Courtney to have. And then Pat's on the search for trying to find, you know, like Mike's mama. Um, Starman, he went to Utah to go search for, to do a wild goose chase. And I'm still not in the, like, I'm still in the camp of the possibility that the person in the sewers could be Starman. But again, it just wouldn't make sense why he would have to go through all that when he's already conversating with them. It's like, why spy on people that you talk to all the time? Like, I don't understand that. It has, some, some, something else is afoot here. Like, I'm still under the impression that maybe that person is still Ginny and Todd's mama, but we'll see. And thank you for tuning in. So, this is actually good. It's nice to get some action on Stargirl, especially after, you know, like last week's episode. We got a little bit in depth too, like with the whole emotional thing with, you know, with Mike's mom and everything. So be on the lookout for that and we'll see where things go. No shade in the episode, but it's still a good episode and we will continue to roll forward. So hit me up on Twitter and on Instagram. Hit the notification bell so you'll get notified when my other videos pop up because Titans is back, baby. We got the first two episodes of Titans on my channel and we're also doing Doom Patrol when that comes up while we continue to go over Stargirl. So that was it, guys. So till next week, episode 10 for a little Stargirl action. Um, I think, yeah, I think we got four more episodes to go and we'll keep rolling the Stargirl train all the way to the end. So until then, watch out for your grandparents because they might be crazy. And we're out this bitch!